Hey folks, uh, uh, this lesson is using significant digits. Our book suggested that we split, uh, we don't even split 1.3 up, we do it in one day and I just couldn't. So I did the first part in part one and if it's in my class I'll do it in two days. So anyway, let's get started here. So identifying significant digits. So we have rules and examples. So all non-zero digits are significant. Okay, non-zero means there's no zero. So here's one, two, three, four digits. So it has four significant digits. This has three, so it has three significant digits. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, duh. Well, zero ch uh, changes things, you guys. So if you have zeros between uh, two other significant digits, then the zeros are considered significant also. So here's two significant digits. Well, this says three. I think there's supposed to be a point zero five in there right there. So uh, let's do that. Let's put a zero in there to make it three. Okay. So there's three significant digits for that guy right there. And then uh, this guy right here, this one really hones it in right here. These are considered significant digits because they're in between these two digits. So it has seven significant digits right here, okay? So um, zeros at the end of a number uh, that's to the right of a decimal are also significant. So if we see something like these guys right here, these are considered significant because it's to the right of this decimal. So this has uh, one, two, three, four significant digits right here. Okay, this one has, uh, don't count that one, you only count these ones. One, two, three, four. If it's on the right hand side of, of, the, of the decimal right here, they are considered significant digits right here. Okay, so this next rule says um, uh, zeros to the left uh, of the first non-zero digit uh, in a decimal are not significant. And you're thinking, okay, well, what's that mean? Well, here's an example right here. So uh, these are not considered significant if they're to the left. Only if they're to the right of these numbers is a zero significant. So these aren't significant. Only these two are. Okay, this one's not significant, but this one is because it's in between these two numbers. So this one has one, two, three. Okay, so just rules, you guys. Don't get too caught up on that. And zeros at the end of a number without a decimal are assumed to be not significant. So, uh, so something like this, you guys. Uh, these two guys are not considered significant. But this one's between these two guys. So here is one, two, three. That one's significant. There's three. This one only has two. We don't count these ones right here. Okay, if there was a decimal and a point zero, then all of a sudden all of them would be counted. But this one only has two right here. That's what that rule saying right there. Okay, so determine the number of significant digits in each measurement. Here's the first one right here. Okay, so now to the right of a decimal. Now I normally wouldn't count these except there's some non-zero digits over here. So all of these are going to be counted. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. There's eight of them, you guys. Okay. Here's how your book suggested doing it. They made this uh, this table right here, and first they counted all the non-zero digits right here. So this six, this four, and this five were non-zero, so that counted as three significant digits. Then we count the zeros between the two significant digits. So this zero is in between these two guys, and these three zeros right here are in, are in between these two. Uh, significant digits right here. So there's four zeros that counted. And then the end zero that was to the right of this decimal was this guy. So there was one. So they added them all up. So let's do that with this one right here, you guys. Let's make a table. And then uh, let's count all the non-zero digits. Okay. Seven is, one is, eight is. So there's three of them right there. Okay. Let's count the zeros between the two significant digits. Okay. Between uh, two significant digits. So here's one, here's one. So those two right here. So there's two of them right there, okay? And then zero's at the end. Because it's at the end of the right of the decimal, we're going to count that guy also. So that one's considered significant. So that added up to six, okay? All right, so that has six uh, significant digits. All right, so uh, critique reasoning. So a student claimed that uh, 0 0.045 and 0 0.0045 uh, meters have the same number of significant digits. Do you agree? Well, I do. Zeros to the right of a decimal point only count as significant digits if they are either to the right of the last non-zero digit or between two other uh, digits. So if it's to, you know, on the on the decimal, then yes. But those guys are both, uh, they have two significant digits right here. There's only two right here, and this one only has two right here, okay? Even though they're different numbers, okay? Use significant digits in calculating measurement. Okay, so here we go. So um, these are just rules, and to be honest with you, I wasn't aware of these until um, uh, this summer when I was going over this with uh, when we were going to trainings and stuff. So 
um, uh, I guess our new Common Core is uh, emphasizing significant digits. So anyway, so when you add or subtract, so the sum of the or, or the difference must be rounded to the same place value as the last significant digit of the least precise measure. And we're thinking, oh, what's that mean? Don't worry, I have an example, and I'll show you what all this means. And when we multiply and divide, the product or quotient must have no more significant digits than the least precise measurement. And I know you're thinking, what the heck? Well, let's see, here's an example. Find the perimeter and the area of a rectangle that measures 22.3 feet by 75 feet. And make sure our answer has the correct number of significant digits. All right, so the perimeter, well, everybody's done perimeter before. We just add them all up, 194 all right, let's go back to that rule right here. So when we're adding things, the sum or difference must be rounded to the same place value as the last significant digit of the least precise measurement. So which one is the least precise, this number or this number? Well, this number was right here. So 75 was the least precise. And so it's rounded to the ones spot. So we got to round this to the one spot also. So this would round up to 195 feet right there. Okay, that's all that means when you add or subtract. So you round it to the uh, same place value as the as the, the least precise. Remember, precise is uh, the least decimals right there. Okay, the area, if we multiplied, would get us this number right here. Okay, let's go back to our rule right here. So the product or quotient must have no more significant digits than the least precise measurement. Okay, this one's the least precise measurement. How many significant digits does this guy have? It has two. So we got to round this number so it only has two significant digits. So um, uh, that's what this says right here. So we're either going to round this to 1,600 or 1,700. Well, that's closer to 1,700. So the area is going to be 1,700 feet squared or square feet right there. Okay, using significant digits to estimate. Okay, so a city is planning a classic car show. A section of road 820 feet long will be closed to provide a space to display the cars in a row. Okay, let's keep going. So in past shows, the longest car was 18.36 feet uh, long, and the shortest car was 15.1 feet long. Okay, so based on this information, about how many cars can be displayed in this year's show? And we're going to use our significant digits to help us. So the available space is this 820. Here's the longest. Here's the shortest. So those are the numbers that go in right there. Let me slide that up right there. Okay, so let's formulate a plan. So the word about indicates that our answer is going to be an estimate, you guys. And the available space is going to be the number of cars times the length of the car. Okay, so how many cars times the length? Okay, so, so the longest is going to be uh, the 800 is going to be equal to the length uh, times um, uh, the longest car. This one's going to be the uh, the, the, the S times the shortest car. That's what S stands for. So we're going to find the longest length we can have and the shortest length we can have. Okay. So, um, so the longest uh, car was uh, the 18.36 and the shortest car was 15.1. Now what do you think? How many, would we have more cars with the long cars in there in this 820 feet or we'd have more cars? Could we fit more cars in with the shorter cars? Well, the shorter car is right here. So uh, when we find um, this L right here, when we do 820, we divided both sides by this number right here. Here we divided both sides by this 15.1. So those are the numbers that go in there right there. Okay, now remember, this number is going to be smaller than this number right here because I can fit more smaller cars into 820 feet right there. So when we divide, we get about 45 cars and 54 cars right here. Okay. So uh, what we're going to so the so at least about 45 cars can be displayed and at most 54 cars can be displayed. So it's somewhere between 45 and 54 cars right there. So um, the average of these numbers would be a good estimate of the number of cars. So if we the average remember how to average we add these two numbers up and divide by two. So 45 plus 54 is going to get us. Um, uh, 99 and 99 divided by 2 is 49.5 so we're going to say about 50 cars right there okay all right so on average about 50 cars can we display inside of there plus or minus so then they'll ask you because the cars will probably have many different lengths a reasonable estimate it would be a whole number somewhere between that small number any whole number between the two numbers 45 and 54 all right, you guys, I hope that makes sense, and if you are in my class, I would probably assign you that. Take care.